Good morning, Hockey Nation fans. It's a little bit earlier than normal. I have a crazy day ahead of me. Happy New Year 2023. We have some interesting updates from Detroit Red Wings and uh, around the league. It's also a big day for the Canadian World Juniors, which we'll do a separate video on later. But that is an exciting thing to look forward to after a very close game by Canada against Slovakia. What the heck? Slovakia way better than people give them credit for. Good morning, Real Deal Prime. If Arizona won't take him, I assume you're talking about Verona. Buffalo will. We will see. Um, it's going to be interesting. Good morning, Lucky. Good morning. You can hear me, I assume. I don't know if we're saying speak. I can obviously speak. <laughs> Another win by the Sabres last night. Huge game. Tage Thompson continues to take the NHL by storm. Um, we'll take a quick look at that before we're done here. So this morning is interesting because Jakob Vrana, who's got a uh, well-known struggle over the last few months, missing two months in the NHL player assistance program. Not sure if this was drugs or alcohol. We're not quite sure, but we assume it's one of those things. Okay. Yeah, real deal was making me think we couldn't to speak. Obviously, I'm speaking. Um, well, here we go. Robbie Fabry's coming back off of injury. Will play tonight, apparently. And in order to make room for Robbie Fabry, the Red Wings, they had a press conference. They talked pregame. They did not talk about this move. And then after the press conference... They placed in the last 17 hours Jakob Verana on waivers. This is the central piece to the Anthony Mantha trade from Washington. He does have that cup experience. He's obviously super talented. This guy can really shoot the puck and really score. And I thought he had a great preseason, but then, you know, we've had these well documented issues. He went back to the uh, AHL for a conditioning stint after returning to practice with the Red Wings last, at the end of last year. And he had no points in three games. So I don't know how much of his performance in the AHL weighed in on this. Something's up. For them to put such a talented player who's obviously had injury problems, who's obviously had you know, personal issues, such an important piece of a key Steve Yeisman deal. You know, something's going on there. And I think they're just saying, listen, Robbie Fabry's been battling back from a significant knee injury, I believe it was. Is it seven months? Is it eight months? And yeah, and Robbie Fabry's career has been, you know, affected by these injuries. We know when he's in the lineup, he's an effective, he can be a top six player that scores 20 goals. He's an energetic, fast player that, is really gritty. And Jakob Verona, when he's in the lineup, he can really rifle the puck. You can you can score, and the Red Wings need goal scoring, but not enough, I guess, to say, like, hey, we're gonna we're gonna sacrifice a Robbie Fabry for a Jakob Verona. They're gonna give Jakob Verona, put him on waivers. Now there is a major disincentive here for a team to pick him up. I assume he will clear by 12 noon. Five million for two years. The Sabres are looking to take him on a contract like that. The Sabres are killing it without this guy. Do they really need Jakob Verona, though? If you look at the Sabres lineup, I'm, I mean, I'm not saying that they wouldn't. Maybe you pick him up and you kick the tires on him, right? Because you could always put him back on waivers. You could, you know, put him on waivers, no problem. Or trade him, for that matter. <laughs> but nobody's going to trade for a guy that can clear through waivers. So I, th I think at this point, we will wait and see. We have several hours, I think six, seven hours before someone can pick him up. You kind of hope they don't lose him. You kind of hope that he's, he remains a Red Wing and that Stevie Eiserman has talked to other general managers or the signal is that the bat signals out there to say, listen, this guy is not ready to come back to the NHL. He is high risk. We acknowledging this, similar to when Carey Price, think about that, when Carey Price was put into the expansion draft for the Seattle Kraken to claim, and they did not claim him. Why? Well, it came out that he had substance abuse problems and still knee injury, and he's not played since. So, well, I guess, yeah, did he? I don't think he's played, has he? He's never played since then. So, I mean, maybe that's a case of this. you got to think Stevie Eisenman is a very, very, very shrewd character, very well-respected. 
But if you're a rival GM in Arizona or you're a rival GM in Buffalo, for as you mentioned, you got cap room and you're thinking, hey, I'd like to pick up a 25, 30 goal score that could score 40 if he's got his head on straight. It's a really talented player. But we, we, we'll see. So we will keep an eye on this in the next 12 hours. And that is the story with Jakob Vrana. We will see Robbie Fabry tonight. And we will know by noon, I assume, whether or not Jakob Vrana remains a Detroit Red Wing. Moving ahead, there was an interesting comment on Jonathan Bergen. If you kept up with this, this might be another reason you're not too worried about using it, losing all Jakob Vrana because Jonathan Bergen, who actually crushed the AHL last year, had a great training camp this year and rookie camp. He showed he could play wing, which was the big question mark in my head because he's always played center. And, man, he has come up, and he's got 13 points in 22 NHL games. And he is making a difference out there. His talent is obvious. He makes good lines go. He makes guys around him better. He's unselfish. He can score when it's time. He does not hold back. He can really pull the trigger. And he's a great playmaker, a very skilled player, not big. We know he is very small, probably smaller than he's listed. So this is good news that a young player like this is emerging. Also in the last seven games, that when we take a look at how the Red Wings have done finishing 2022, guys like Michael Rasmussen has stepped up big time. He has got seven points his last five games for the Red Wings. Big, fast center with nice hands. Plays a 200-foot game. Who doesn't want that? And I say big, I mean mammoth, six foot six. The other guy is doing very well for the Detroit Red Wings, who I thought would actually maybe after you know he being he was out for quite a while, and I guess it was related to injury is Elmer Soderblom, and the other Redwood, six foot eight, maybe six foot nine. <laughs> he's had a great rookie year. I mean, he's got an assist again. This I think his last game. If you look at Elmer Soderblom, five goals. He's got two assists in each of his last two games. 19 games, five goals, three assists, eight points. And his presence is nothing short of mammoth. He is a monster, monster person. Verano will, took all his Detroit Red Wings banner off his Twitter account, I heard. Oof, yeah. So, I mean, the risk is here. He's probably shocked, right? He might be shocked. And he's been battling through his own problems, and this is just another piece of adversity for him. Will someone take a flyer on him? I don't know. But this, the emergency of these other young players definitely helps motivate them. They haven't really given Robbie, a Fab, Robbie Fabry a chance since his injury, and this was another big St. Louis <laughs> Blues acquisition. Stevie Eisenman absolutely robbing the Blues. So many good players. So Fabry will make his season debut tonight against the New Jersey Devils. So heading into this, we know the last game, Billy Huso was sick in the, the Senators game. The, the Red Wings, that was a great game, by the way, to finish 2022. We didn't get to do a video on that as I was traveling. Uh, Ottawa Senators, they beat them 4-2, to two, but not before being down. I think they were down 2 nothing. And you were like, you had Magnus Halberg in the net. And you're like, oh, my God, here we go. This is falling apart. But no, the rather resilient Detroit Red Wings came back. But tonight they do go back to their number one, legitimately their number one, Billy Huso. So right now it seems to be Huso and Halberg are one and two. And Nettlekovic rightfully is number three. I think when we look at the goalie statistics, you will see why. So here's the matchup tonight. New Jersey Devils are a little colder in their last little while. I think they're, yeah, 2-6-2 two, and two in their last 10, but they're always dangerous. They go with uh, Mackenzie Blackwood tonight, so that is interesting. No Tarasenko, no O'Reilly. How do the Leafs lose that game? Well, I think O'Reilly has been hurting for a while, and it seems like he's been playing hurt. Probably for a while. I'll tell you how is Robbie Thomas is better than I've ever thought. <laughs> Robert Thomas is really good. And the red and the, the the blues, you know, they've got some offense, they've got good defense. No Tarasenko, that is tough. But the the Leafs are a mess, man. I don't care they're what their record says. They win on talent. They don't win on structure. If those top guns, you know, they're usually firing, but it's it's kind of a track meet. So if you get into a track meet, you have the opportunity to punch back. And if the goal thing's a little off, 
The defense is always off in Toronto, in my opinion. I don't see the defense being good at all in Toronto, not team defensively and not the way that they play in their own zone. So you have a chance, and St. Louis showed that last night. So taking a look at this, Dougie Hamilton's hot, seven points his last five games. Michael Rasmussen, as I mentioned, seven points in his last five games. This is great news. Uh, three goals for Dylan Larkin, but look at this. Four assists for Rasmussen means he also, in those five games, has had three goals. Ben Sherrata plus four is a welcome, welcome change because I think he's kind of struggled all year. He's not lived up to what you would think. Um, so this is good news that he's playing a little bit better. So heading into this, if you look at – let's just take a look at Leaf, at the Red Wings scoring, not the Leafs. Almost at the halfway point, not quite. Kind of like the 45% through the season point, whatever that is. <laughs> Dylan Larkin leading the way, the captain, plus four, 32 points in 34 games. 26 years old. I always had this question, is he a number one center? And i got to be honest, he's playing like a number one would play. He's not a traditional superstar, but he does a lot of things well. He seems to have figured out how to use his speed effectively. Leafs will lose. Leafs will eventually lose when you face better teams in the playoffs, and they're playing a lockdown style, and they're trying to adapt to a lockdown style or trying to – you know, they're, I just don't see it. I don't see it. So on the Red Wings, if you look at this point in the season, you've got to be pretty happy with their record. If you go back to the record, 16, 12, and 7. We'll take a look at the standings in a bit. Billy Huso's save percentage has dropped, but he is 12, 6, and 5 of the 286. Uh, when you look at the stats also, well, Magnus Helberg's proven to be better than Alex Nedelkovic. I don't know if he's the long-term solution. I didn't see, yeah, the Oilers losing – to Seattle. Seattle really has the Oilers number. I am worried about the Oilers. McDavid is having, a, you know, a season for the ages. They made the moves to get Jack Campbell. The young Stuart Skinner is actually the number one goalie. What a mess. Whew, what a mess. I don't get it. Calgary's pulled ahead of them. All right. So taking a look at the Red Wings, they are 21st in the NHL on power play. This has not been killing it. They're 19th in penalty killing. I don't think we would have anticipated this. Come on, Alex Tenge. Faceoffs, 47%. 25th in the league. Crazy. But, you know, the guys that do okay are Larkin and Rasmussen. And Valeno's doing okay in the faceoff circle. It's Cop that takes a lot of faceoffs, and he cannot get to 500. Goals four per game. This is pretty good. 3.11, but this tells you what the new NHL is. NHL has finally ticked up the goal scoring four. The goals against. What? How is Detroit 329? You're 286 for Huso, 409 for Nell Clover. I'd like to understand how this happened. There's been a lot of blowouts. That's how this happened. There's been real bad blowout games. So at this point in the season, you got to look at them and say, all right, good season from Dylan Larkin. Kubalik has been relegated to the third and fourth line for a lot of games. He looked a little bit better in the last few games, but that has been a bit of a problem. Mm, I think they're okay if you look at the caps. They'll they'll get Larkin. Is Larkin Larkin will get a big contract. He deserves it at this point. He'll get $9 million something. Whatever you gave Seth Jones, whatever you gave Bo Horvat, that's what Larkin will get. Dominic Kubelik, cheap. So he's signed this year and next year for what? Is it 1.8 million? So 28 points, 35 games. XC did it, but he's been in the doghouse for a little while. David Perron, as advertised, worth every dime. He has increased the overall skill level and the savvy of the team. And particularly, you saw in that Ottawa game how the Red Wings were down 2 nothing, came back 4 2. They've shown resilience in games like that. So that was excellent. Philip Ronick exceeding expectations overall. He's fallen off a little bit lately. He had a really, really bad game, but then came back with a good one in Ottawa. So that was positive. Lucas Raymond, you can't be too unhappy with this. If you watch him in the game, you're not happy with a minus seven. He had a very poor beginning of the year. 
But you've got to say overall, Lucas Raymond, you're very happy to have him. A little bit of sophomore jinx. If this is a sophomore jinx where he's on a 20-goal pace and 25-30 assists, you're okay with that because he's going to come out the other side. He will prove, along with Tim Stutzley, to be the best player of that draft year. Alexis Lafreniere, not cutting it. You know. According to airnow.gov. Alexa, stop. Why are we talking to Alexa? Jeez. Cancel Alexa. So that has worked out pretty well for them. Cop has been good overall. Three goals. You would like to see more goals there. 17 assists. He provides a gritty individual on the ice. However, he is terrible in face-offs. <laughs> this guy's got to move to the wing at some point or get better in the face-off circle. But overall, it is a plus without subtraction. And Michael Rasmussen, I think his game is rounding out quite nicely. Did you hear there's Alexa? I got Alexa going here. I got Google going downstairs. I don't know what's going on. I'm surrounded by the AIs. Um, Oscar Sundqvist has been a great – he was a late-season pickup last year from St. Louis Blues. So you look at this lineup. You got David Perron. You got Oscar Sundqvist. You're going to have Robbie Fabry coming in. Jake Wallman has been really, really good. I said this before. This guy's getting better and better. He's turned out to be an excellent defenseman. So these are pickups that have turned out really well, and we know how well Billy Huso's played. He has been the rock of this team. So all those those are good things. Ali Mata has really worked out, solidifying that second core and letting Philip Ronick do his thing and be more effective. Uh, we're seeing good games from Adam Ernie. You might not see massive production, but he's a physical presence and he's consistent. Joe Valeno's getting better. Joe Valeno in the face-off circle, that's going to let him move up in the lineup. Eventually, you're going to see Larkin, Rasmussen, Valeno 1, 2, and 3, in my opinion. Pia Suter's worked out pretty well. I know his stats aren't huge, but he's played well. Moritz Sider is obviously off from last year. That is obvious. He's not producing offensively. I don't think he's been effectively... Physically, his minus 13 is a little bit shocking. He's scoring at a slower clip. That being said, still, you're very happy to have him. And in a year or two, you're going to be very, very, very happy to have him. Only 10 points behind Tampa. Lots of hockey still to play. I don't see them catching Tampa. Well, they've certainly had Tampa's number with that 7-4 win in their last game. But So you look at all these additions, all great additions. Ben Sherrod has had a rough year, but the last you know five games have been much better from him. So I think you're starting to see what we had expected from Ben Sherrod. He's probably not playing on the right spot. He should be a number four, not number two. Um, Elmer Soderblom. This guy is very, very, very good. When he's in the lineup, you're really happy. He can really skate. He can score. He's good. He's hard on the puck. He's a monster, like a physical presence between him, Rasmussen, and Sundqvist. That Red Oaks group, even though they don't play together all the time. Super awesome. So that's worked out really well. Tyler Bertuzzi's been hurt. We will see how this pans out as he is an unrestricted free agent. Does Tyler Bertuzzi remain a Red Wing? Does Jakob Verona remain a Red Wing? These are all questions. The Austin Zarnik moves, he's, when he's come up, he's played very well. Small player, but he's done well in the AHL and the NHL. Osterley has been very, very solid back there. Better than Robert Hag. Robert Hag is pretty disappointing to me. But, you know, if you're getting all the way down to Robert Hagen, that's your first real big disappointment. You're doing pretty good. So good, good success here. We talked about New Jersey, who were red hot, unbeatable. They're star Jack Hughes, and he is a star. Don't be confused. This is a superstar. Sabres are pulling it. I think that when you look at the standings, you look at how Tage Thompson plays and everybody that's around him, he's leading that team. Sabres got to make the playoffs. I just don't see it. And if they're not going to make the playoffs, it'll be because of New York Islanders or because of, you know, but you got to think New Jersey's going to fall here. They have been falling. And when you look at the standings, you will see that. However, overall, this is a much better lineup than, say, two years ago. You, I think you're seeing levels from Jack Hughes that you would have hoped from a first overall pick. Jesper Bratt signed his big contract and he is paying off handsomely. Nico Hishar exceeding my expectation. Tage Thompson is beyond good. Point and a half a game, guys. Come on. Greg John, good morning, sir. Welcome, and I appreciate you jumping on. Yeah, the Thompson Skinner line. Thompson is one of those guys that he's just making everyone better. Tuck is what you saw in Vegas was just the tip of the iceberg, obviously. You give him a bigger role, and look at what he's doing. 
If you're Minnesota North Stars, or sorry, Wild, <laughs> they wore the North Stars uniform their last game, I think, against the Red Wings. If you were the Minnesota Wild and you gave up Alex Tuck in the expansion draft, wouldn't you love that move back? Now, you wouldn't want to give up Matt Dumba. But there probably was someone else you could have given up. You definitely would say I would have kept Alex Tuck. So New Jersey is not going to be easy to contend with, though. They do have Mackenzie Blackwood is still trying to find his way. He has had long COVID issues, had physical issues. So you look at Detroit. They are now in fifth. Buffalo is surging. But they are 7-2-1 and one in their last 10. The Red Wings are 3-5-2. and two. Chemistry tuck has a Thompson starting to grow. You got a six foot four guy that can really fly and a six foot six, six foot seven guy that can really score and skate. And he's got skill and he's asserting himself better than we ever. I, who would have thought Tage Thompson, 35 games, has 36 games, has 30 goals? So you got to look at that and go, Buffalo, whew, they're going to they're gonna push for the playoffs. I think they probably got a little more fuel in Detroit. Don't count out Detroit, but I think slowly but surely you will see. You can't have 110 goals for 117 against. That ratio is not going to work. Minus 7 in the goal differential for Detroit versus a plus 21 for Buffalo. As as not great as the Buffalo goaltending is, 122 goals against is not great. They are number one, I think, in the NHL with 143 goals for. So you look at the wild card race and you got to go Pittsburgh. They've kind of fallen off a little bit the last few games, but, you know, they had a really good surge there. Tristan Jari, I think, is out. I think Tristan Jari has an injury, and you got to keep an eye on that. If Tristan Jari is out long-term, that is a problem for Pittsburgh. I have no interest in seeing Pittsburgh in the playoffs. I'm fine with that. Sorry, Sidney Crosby. I love him. And Jenny Malkin, I like Tristan Jari. But, and Jake Gunzel is super, super underrated. Played 23 or 24 minutes the other night. Guy scores with him without Sidney Crosby. But you got to look at Buffalo and you got to be betting on Buffalo, I think. Ottawa's definitely improved. Look at that. Florida's a yo yo team. They win last night. They will lose again. Do not worry. Florida will remain underachievers, even with Barkov, even with Kachuk. That is the coach you picked. Good job. Defense, everyone says not great. This is a coaching thing. Bad news for you. Islanders are hanging in there. Buffalo surging. Washington lost last night, but Washington's 7 1 2 in their last 10. Did you think that was going to happen? So, this is going to be a playoff race that I do not think will include Detroit. So, the Wednesday night matched up against the New Jersey Devils, and we look ahead at the schedule. So, we got New Jersey tonight, Florida, the inconsistent, but they have Detroit's number, Florida, on Friday. And then they travel to Toronto to face the very, very talented high-flying Toronto Maple Leafs. Who knows what happens there, most likely. That's not in their favor. Next week, they have Winnipeg, who's playing very well. Good job, Rick Bonus. Toronto on Thursday. Columbus. So they've got three games, three games. They have, do not have a totally easy schedule. Then four games in the third week and three games they end the month kind of on a nicer note with San Jose, Montreal, New York Islanders are never easy. But these these are things that are, are will help them a little bit maybe, but I do not see this being a playoff race that includes Detroit. I think you're going to see Buffalo surpass a Pittsburgh and challenge a Washington or an Islanders. And you got to think New Jersey is a candidate to drop out of the playoffs. Columbus, what a just a terrible mess. Patrick Liney hurt again? Is he sick? Does he have mono? Something weird, right? So that is the that is it, folks. That is all that's going on. Watch the game tonight. New Jersey Devils in Detroit, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, 4 o'clock Pacific. Can the Red Wings get another win under their belt? Will New Jersey get back in the winning column? They've been inconsistent in their last 10, but I, I, I got to think if you look at this, New Jersey is going to be the team that will drop out of this. You got to think Buffalo will pop up, and it's going to be a, a dogfight for the wild card that probably will not include Detroit. That would be my prediction. Will Jakob Verona clear waivers today? We'll keep an eye on that. And the big, big game tonight really is in the World Junior Hockey Championship. Canada. USA. What? Canada, USA, Swedes, 
versus the Czechs. We have no Russians in this tournament. The Slovaks gave Canada a run for their money, just like they beat the USA, remember. They beat USA 6-3. So Canada really sloppy in their own games. I would not want to face Buffalo. But Buffalo's goaltending is a bigger problem in the playoffs than it is in the regular season. The goals that they score are because they're, you know, they're high flying, lots of talent, young talent team. Dylan Cousins having a great year. Skinner playing great year. Your prediction is Verano will be a Sabre. I think that is, I am not convinced of that, but I'm not convinced he's a Red Wing at the end of the day either. I don't, I don't know. This will work out. It's really disappointing. You got to be disappointed. The fact he didn't get any points in the AHL in three games. You got to be disappointed with how his career in Detroit has gone just because of his potential and of who they traded him for, which was a big piece of their team, Anthony Mantham. That was a real win on paper for Steve Geisman and the Red Wings. Might end up with nothing out of this. <laughs> Would the outcome be different if Slav was playing against Canada? I don't know. Slavkovsky, I thought, played well in the last – he played okay. He's not – I don't know what it is. I was debating that. It could have, because Simon Nemec is better than Shane Wright, guys. There's a reason Simon Nemec was picked second overall and could have, in my opinion, been first overall. I said this all along. He he is going to be a very good NHL defenseman. He, he's already an AHL defenseman, played terrific for, for a very underrated Slovakia team and that Slovakia team has been on the come up not just because of Slav and Nemec but Slav to your point could have been difference maker at that level he is so big and so strong he shoots the puck really well you saw what he did in the world championships which is tier three quality play by the way guys not in the world champ in the Olympics was junk like you're dealing with the third best of everything in there and then he went and dominated but he's played okay in the NHL, so you got to think he would have made a difference. I think I think it could have been a difference. They were very close. They were hard to play against. And Canada has been very, very sloppy, as much as it pains me to say. Super sloppy, making lots of mistakes, overconfident in their ability. You know who's not overconfident and who's legit? is Connor Bernard, as he set the new record for Team Canada lifetime goal scoring, points, Leading the tournament two to one to the next leading scorer. Two to one. Connor Bedard. Montreal is on a five game losing streak. Do you think that is a coincidence? I mean, listen, they're not intentionally tanking, but I don't think they're trying to try to get any better. I wouldn't, would you? Ottawa got a shutout yesterday, four nothing. I saw that. That was good. I'm worried for Canada tonight. On paper, there should be no issues with the Canadian defense. This makes no sense to me in Canada. We will see what happens, though. I did see that. Ottawa's on the come up. Like, Ottawa's bumped up quite a bit. If you look at their record, they were basement for a long time. They're now 18 and 17. Tim Stutzley, I think, has 15 goals on the year. Brady Kachuk having a very good year. Shane Pinto having a good rookie year. The defense in that team, I love Jake Sanderson the way I thought I would. Thomas Shabbat, the jury's a little out for me on him long term. Zub's real good. So I think there's a lot to like in Ottawa. They're definitely on the come up. I mean, 6-3-1 and one, their last 10 is better than 3-5-2. and two. This is why I say just Detroit's not going to be in the playoffs. And I don't think they're going to be in the wild card race by the end of the year. I think that'll be a spirit reality. They would need something dramatic to happen, like a Jakob Verona coming back in and scoring big time and having a reformation. I don't see that type of scoring coming from Robbie Fabry. But that could do it. Drake Batherson, real good player. Big, goes to the net, consistent offensively. There's a lot to like in Ottawa. That young defense just going to get better, and the goaltending ain't too bad. So here we are in the new year. Wednesday night matchup, New Jersey for D against Detroit. But the real big game tonight is Canada versus USA. Who do you got? I am not sure. I think it'll be Canada, but, man, it ain't going to be easy. We got to pull for Canada. Dennis Williams, the Everett Silvertips head coach and general manager, is the coach. Olin Zellweger, who had he's had, he had some bad turnover in the last game. <laughs> bad luck and bad turnover. 
he's got to you got to play like Olin's capable of playing because he gets a lot of ice time. Olin, we're pulling for you, buddy. Big, big game, though. Canada versus USA. Looking forward to that. Let's see Canada win gold again. We would love to see that, but they got to get by the U.S. Once they get past the U.S., it is no joke. You got Czech and Sweden on the other side. They handled Sweden. Czechs handled them. Don't forget that. Czechs have 40% of their goals from the defense. We knew coming in they had three great defensemen, and probably more than that, but three great defense, like two great defensemen, Svozl and uh, Juracek. And then you drop down, you got Spashek. Those top three alone, that is like enviable in Czech. But they got to get past the USA, and the USA is clicking. USA has got some firepower. Logan Cooley leading the way. This will be a game for the ages, I think. I don't think it'll be easy. Did the LA Kings win yesterday? I thought they lost. I just I watched a part of this, but I didn't finish the game. They lost. Hey, well, they end up being Dallas. Wow. Okay. They beat Dallas. That is good news. The LA Kings like doing it in a very non-conventional way. They don't have fantastic goaltending. Great season for Villardi so far. you got to be happy with his play. Jason Robertson scored last night for Dallas. You keep an eye on that. He's been cooler, but still, he's got 26 goals, guys. Kupari, Kopitar getting his 11th, and then Adrian Kempe with 15. The Kevin Fiala move has really worked out. That is a fantastic offseason signing for your LA Kings. Canada versus Czech final, but you got to get past the USA, and I'm not convinced that is a given. USA is no slouch. There's a lot of firepower on that USA team, and they show when they get going, they're hard to contain. I don't think the goaltending has been fantastic, but it hasn't been horrible. You got Luke Hughes over there. You got Logan Cooley. You got Cutter Gauthier. The Will Smith kids on that team. They got a lot of firepower. They can really play. So this is going to be a really tough game. I would not think it's a given we saw owen beck draw and we're happy to see as a montreal canadian fan if you're a montreal canadian fan owen beck drawing for canada for the injured colton doc i thought he played well i think they should give him more ice time he is reliable defensively all right guys we are 18 minutes past the hour i'm going to wrap this up thank you so much for joining please hit the likes and subscribes if you have not done so please share this with your grandma your father your mother too Let's go Red Wings. Let's see them against tonight and let's go Canada against the Team USA. Yeah, that's weird. I thought that was a long-term move here. He's playing terrible. I think he's just playing bad. He's a minus 13 or something. USA doesn't like a hard kidding game. That's coming. But you got to catch them. They are, I don't know that. Cutter Goche is no slouch. They are not a bad, I mean, listen, I would pick Canada over them on paper, but I do not like the way Canada's played. I'm not seeing the best game from Canada, and I'm not sure you're going to. They've been sloppy since the pre-tournament. Really kind of surprised. Shane Wright, I think you see he's not a creative player, but he can shoot the puck. Connor Bedard, you if you are not watching Connor Bedard in this tournament, you are missing out on a super, 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 super star. He is better than we all thought, I think. The things he does in small areas and being a small guy, whoo. Yeah, Quick's not been great. They've been relying actually on the third goal, <laughs> which is Phoenix Copley. Like, Phoenix Copley has been winning games for the LA Kings. But the LA Kings have been winning games. They got a lot of veteran savvy that a lot of other teams do not have. And their head, I'm telling you, they think they can win the Stanley Cup. Drew Doughty, Kopitar, these guys think in their head they can win the Stanley Cup, and they might be right. They might have that grit where they click at some point and boom. Two for a great game. The U.S. is going down. We will see what happens. I am not saying there are any guarantees. Have a wonderful day, everybody, and we will see you tomorrow. Let's see, probably Friday. We will do an update and recap what happened in the New Jersey game, what happened in the Canada versus USA game, and a preview of Florida and Toronto games for against Detroit Red Wings. Have a wonderful day, Hockey Nation fans. Thank you so much for supporting us. Hit like, subscribe, and share to your friends. And let me know if you're on Twitter, and we will add you on Twitter. We're going to start growing Twitter quite a bit.